You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, everyone. It's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This week's episode is a review and recommendation for my favorite TV show, which is called The Profit, and it runs on CNBC. It's a reality show featuring the investor Marcus Lemonis as he invests in small businesses. And I'm going to explain why I think this is the best entrepreneurship show on TV, some things that I've learned from the show, and why I recommend that you watch it if you are interested in entrepreneurship. Before we get into that, though, I do want to say a big thank you to my new patrons on Patreon. Thank you so much to Dan C. and Andreas D. We're now up to 12 bonus episodes of The Voluntary Life that I've put out for my patrons on Patreon. And I realized that I hadn't mentioned these for a while. So in case you're interested, I thought I would just tell you some of the titles of the more recent bonus episodes. In bonus episodes six and seven, I put out part one and part two of an audiobook of my book, Negotiate for Mutual Profit. And that audiobook is exclusively available to my patrons. Bonus episode eight is called Productivity Hacks for Evernote. Bonus episode nine is an interview I did on the free cast. Episode 10 is called What is the Appeal of Stoicism? Bonus episode 11 is called Being an Individual versus Finding Community. And bonus episode 12 is called Are Cryptocurrencies a New Asset Class? So if you're interested in getting hold of those bonus episodes, or if you would just like to support the show, then you can become a patron on Patreon. And you can find out more about that on my website, thevoluntarylife.com, or by going directly to my Patreon page, which is patreon.com slash thevoluntarylife. So now I'll tell you about this show, The Profit. It features an entrepreneur called Marcus Lemonis, who is the CEO of Camping World, And Marcus Lemonis invests his own money in struggling small businesses. He invests a load of money, takes control and reorients the business. And each episode follows his investment in one small business. Sometimes the deals fail and he doesn't reach an agreement with the business owners, with the other entrepreneurs. And other times you watch the process of him reorganizing the business, investing money and so forth. The reason I recommend this show and the reason that I like it so much is that I think it's the best representation of entrepreneurship on TV. In fact, this show has probably done more to show what entrepreneurship is really like than any other show I can remember on TV. Because Hollywood presents a very bizarre picture of business. I don't think Hollywood writers understand business at all. And what they usually end up doing is just making business people these evil, ruthless villains without even really explaining what on earth business people do. Then, of course, there are shows like Shark Tank. Uh, The UK version is called Dragon's Den, and I've watched a lot of Dragon's Den. I haven't watched that much of the American version, Shark Tank. But what I found about that show is that it's a, a lot of posing. In that show, entrepreneurs pitch to a panel of investors, seasoned entrepreneurs, And there's a lot less detail uh, because it's at the pitch stage. It's not actually existing businesses. And what I find about that show is that that they go for a lot of drama in posing about who is going to be the alpha among the sharks. There's a lot of one-upmanship and general posing to establish hierarchy. And that's kind of where the drama of the show comes from. And there's also often a lot of cringy moments where the investors just humiliate an entrepreneur who has a kind of ridiculous business plan. I do like all shows about business and entrepreneurship generally, but those are the reasons why I don't particularly like that one and why I really prefer The Profit because The Profit is actually dealing with existing businesses and real business problems. And The Profit is a show that is very transparent about making money. You get to see a lot of the numbers involved in each of these businesses and It's very transparent, but although it's clear about making money, it's obvious that that this doesn't mean doing anything unethical. And I think Marcus Lomenis has a very good attitude towards the kind of business practices that he wants to implement and the kind of things that he doesn't support. So it's a show that deals with real business problems and real business ideas, and it uses infographics to explain 
the problems that each small business is facing and the way that Marcus is going to try and turn around the business. And they even go through and explain concepts like contribution margin and other things that you really won't hear on TV very much. So that's why I think this is a great show. Marcus Lemonis has an interesting strategy for investing in small businesses. He tends to choose retail and business to consumer. That's interesting for me because my experience is more in business to business and consulting. So this is a different industry and different area than my own experience. And I find that interesting. And I guess that Marcus is probably doing that because his own experiences in retail and the consumer sector because of him being the CEO of Camping World. His strategy is also to invest in existing struggling businesses rather than startups. That's also interesting for me because my experience is more in startups. I think the reason that he does that is because these existing businesses have proven that there is at least some demand for their products and they have some momentum. So what he's able to do is fix a lot of the operational problems in the business and that really helps but he knows that there's a kernel of value in there that's kind of been proven because the business is existing. That would be my guess. There are some other interesting aspects of his strategy. One thing that I've asked myself when watching this show is why does he keep investing in family businesses? Because family businesses have all this drama. So, you know, you will often find a, a restaurant that's run by a family or other things that he's invested in that have been family businesses or things like an ice cream business clothing business and these kinds of things. And I think one reason maybe you could say cynically that uh, they pick family businesses because there's a lot of drama and it makes good TV to have a lot of drama. But I think there's also something going on which I would call the second generation entrepreneur syndrome. And what that is is that he finds these businesses that have a fundamentally good product, a fundamentally good idea, but the entrepreneurs have lost their way in the second generation. So you may have had an entrepreneur who was very good, who started the business, but then that entrepreneur who's the parent can't delegate to their kids, who now would be the next generation to run this business. They just can't let go and so there is all these internal problems. Or alternatively, another thing that happens is that you find that the first generation entrepreneur who was really good has let go. But the second generation, the kids of the entrepreneur, are not really entrepreneurs. They've just inherited this family business, but they're not really into it and they don't have the drive. And so the business is kind of faltering and losing its way. And that's something that Marcus Lemonis is very good at reorienting the business and putting in processes and procedures and often putting new people in charge of the business. He also tends to choose businesses that have no transparency and no management information systems in place. The entrepreneurs don't know their numbers. They just don't know what's going on in the business. And this might not be a deliberate choice of Marcus Lemonis. It might just be a feature of many small businesses that are struggling but one of the interesting things that happens on the show is that you can see that a lot of the entrepreneurs don't know how much it costs to make each individual product and therefore what the contribution margin of each product that they're making is. And they don't know how much inventory they have. And there's all these other problems to do with a lack of transparency. And that's one of the key features of the show. And one of the things that I find interesting about it is that you get to see a business that it's not clear how it's working. You get to see the numbers and get transparency during the course of the show. So you come to understand why a business is struggling. I find that this show gives me a lot to think about from Marcus Lemonis' approach to investing in businesses. He talks about three different aspects of business that have given me a lot of food for thought in watching his approach. One of the things he really focuses on is the people in a business. And a feature of this show is that he talks about the fact that the people are a major selling point for the business because consumers want to know who they're dealing with and why you are in business and who you are. And a lot of the time, Marcus has to force the entrepreneurs to be more explicit about their own personal mission and about who they are, why they're doing this business and what they stand for. And that's very interesting. So one example of this was a watch manufacturer that was originally set up because the entrepreneurs wanted to create a line of watches 
that they would donate to specific charities um, for different colors of the watch, depending on which charity you were interested in. You could buy, like, say, a blue watch, and that would be a charity for clean water, or another watch would be a charity for cancer or whatever. And the guy who started this business, his mother actually died of cancer, and he dropped this whole charity aspect from their marketing and just didn't want to think about it after his bereavement when his mother died. And one of the things that Marcus Lemonis did when coming into this business was to identify that this was actually the most interesting thing about their business was this charity aspect that they had integrated into their watches. And he pushed them to be explicit about the story and explain this is why they're in business, this is why they got interested in it, and to put that front and center again in their marketing. So that's an interesting thing about the people when it comes to the entrepreneurs. But another aspect of the show about people that's really important is that Marcus often identifies that a lot of the time there are employees in the business who are really the people keeping the business going. This is especially true when the entrepreneurs have kind of lost their way and not that interested. And a good example of that is a key lime pie business that he invested in, where the original entrepreneurs were frankly not really doing much and had to let the business it was originally quite successful and they just let it drift. And there was one woman who was more or less running the entire business, an employee. And one of the things that Marcus Lemonis did in that show was to give her some share ownership, give her way more responsibility. And actually, he got rid of the original entrepreneurs and pretty much put her in charge of the business and gave her incentives um, like part ownership. And he does this a lot. He tries to identify key employees and make sure that they're properly incentivized to stay in the business because without them, the business is going to fall apart. And that's another interesting aspect of the people side of the show. He also focuses a lot on the processes. And this is, for me, really some of the stuff that I enjoy most because I just love workflows and designing processes. So he spends a lot of the time with each business implementing processes that simply weren't there. And that's really about designing workflows. So a typical problem that you will see is that there will be a massive load of unused inventory. One of the businesses I remember he went into was a fashion business and they just had hundreds of dresses and tops and things stored in their basement. There's just loads and loads of unused inventory. And that's a typical problem for businesses that are not in control of their processes, they end up having a lot of waste like this. So one of the key ways in which he reorients uh, businesses is to put processes in place. The third thing that he talks about, and in many ways the most important key thing, is the product itself. When Marcos goes into a business, he tends to focus on what the unique selling point of the product is going to be. So the two ways that people compete are on price and on differentiation. And rarely do people compete on both of those. And in Marcus's case, he usually goes for differentiation. He wants to have something that's different and unique. And a lot of the time, that involves going into these small businesses and really simplifying the product, getting the entrepreneurs back to what it was that made them special and made them different. For example, that often means when he goes into a restaurant, reducing the menu and getting rid of a lot of superfluous stuff, just down to the the key thing that the restaurant is going to do really well. Or in a clothing uh, business, it might mean reducing the different types of clothing that they sell and just getting down to the few key items that they sell really well. That's not always the case. Sometimes what's missing is add-on products, and those are important too. But it's interesting to see that if you watch this show, you'll see a real focus on how do you differentiate yourself? How do you be unique? And I think that's a really interesting issue for anyone who is trying to build a, a business. I've personally learned a lot from Marcus's own approach to investing in businesses, and I think he's a very interesting character. For example, one thing that I've learned from him is that he is very generous and trusting first. So he tends to give people quite a lot of leeway and trust them. And sometimes that doesn't work, but it's an interesting approach because I know that I have a tendency to want people to prove themselves and earn trust. And 
I think it's actually a really important thing to be the first person to trust and to actually show trust in people that you're working with. And so I learn a lot from watching that approach from him. Another thing I've learned from him is that he is incredibly good at delegating and promoting the entrepreneurs that he deals with. Despite the fact that he really does take charge of the business at first, he starts off being very much in control, but he immediately works towards promoting the people in the business and getting them to take responsibility and actually moving back out of the limelight. And I think that's a really valuable skill and that's something that I continue to work on for myself. There's a very influential book, a business book that I read a while ago called What Got You Here Won't Get You There. And this book essentially has one message and it's for successful business people and successful entrepreneurs. And the one idea of this book is stop being so focused and determined and competitive. Once you're successful, take the focus off yourself and promote other people. And the message of that book is the, the reason that you've been successful so far is because you have added so much value. But once you get to a certain position, then actually you need to take the focus off yourself and really promote other people. And that book is written by a consultant, a business consultant. And it's his message for, for people, particularly if you're employing people, this is a relevant message. And he talks about one time where he had lunch with a, a manager and one of his key employees. And they had this lunch and they were talking about various business issues and so forth. And this manager kept coming up with all of these good ideas and uh, talking a lot. And at one point, this consultant said to the manager, can you stop adding so much value to this conversation? And I thought that was a really interesting thing to say, because the point that this consultant was making was that the manager was kind of crowding out this key employee and that the point of the conversation was not for everyone to show how clever they are and how much value they can add, but rather the point was for this manager to find ways to encourage this employee. And I think Marcus Lemonis is very good at that. He is very good at stepping back and getting out of the way, even though he does take charge massively in the, in the beginning. So there's a skill to leadership, I think, which is taking charge and showing some leadership, but also getting out of the way as soon as possible so that other people can take responsibility. I personally find this show very interesting because this is relevant for me at the stage that I am at in life. I already have developed a business and done a startup. And what I'm more interested in now is supporting other entrepreneurs and providing mentorship and guidance and potentially also acting as an investor in the way that Marcus Lemonis does with other businesses. My interest is more in business to business, especially things like consulting and so forth, just because that's where I have expertise and also more in startups, uh, because again, that's where I have more expertise. But nonetheless, I'm still very interested in just generally supporting other entrepreneurs in their own businesses both as a mentor and potentially as an investor. So I've been making this transition for myself. I've been doing uh, coaching of other entrepreneurs for a long time. Back when I was in the UK, I got involved in something called the Young Entrepreneurs Network and I was doing some coaching there. And then when I was in Panama, I got involved in the Founders Institute and was doing some mentoring there. And now through Patreon, I am mentoring and coaching people. And, and the majority of people who I'm coaching through Patreon are entrepreneurs talking to me about their businesses. I also get people who are interested in financial independence and other things like that, but it's mostly entrepreneurs who want to talk about their businesses. So I am very much interested in making this transition myself now to the point where I am more focused on coaching and mentoring other entrepreneurs and potentially investing in their businesses too. I haven't yet found businesses that would be the right fit for me to invest in, but I am always interested. And if you are a listener of my show and you know what I'm about and you've listened to my approach to business, if you are interested in me coaching or mentoring you, then Patreon is one way of getting involved because I provide coaching to supporting listeners through Patreon. And also, if you're a bit further down the line and you have a business and you're interested in me getting more involved and potentially investing in your business, then you can contact me about that too. But whatever stage you're at, if you are interested in entrepreneurship, I really recommend that you check out The Profit. I think it's the best TV show that deals with business issues. 
and it's my favorite TV show. So I recommend you check it out. That's all for this week. Thank you so much for listening. I'll be back next week with another episode. In the meantime, I hope you have a great week. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you like this podcast, please show your support by becoming a patron of The Voluntary Life on Patreon. Your support will help to grow and improve the show, and you'll get access to a treasure trove of rewards, including bonus episodes. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to learn more.